Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our ritual Mishtabura Shir. We're holding Mishtabura Chalik Aleph, and we will be learning today Emir Sashem. We will complete Ein Gimel Ahmed Aleph, and we will do Ein Gimel Ahmed Beis. I'm going to shoot to actually try to do a piece of Ein Dal and Ahmed Aleph as well, and try to complete um, Hilchas Tfilin. By the way, a good Gebench Yard to everyone. I'm recording this on Matzai Yom Kippur. So a good keben shtiar, a good kvittel to everyone. So we pick up on Ayn Gimel Amin Aleph. We're still learning Hilchas Tefillin. We pick up in Simen Mem Gimel Sif Vav. So before we begin reading Sif Vav inside, in Sif Hey, the Mechaber discussed what one should do if he's wearing his tefillin and he needs to go into a base Akisei Kavua Lasais Tzirachav. So that means he's going into a base Akisei Kavua that's a basic key say that's generally used for people to defecate. There's tsaya located there. There's excrement located there on the surface of the ground. It's not down in a ditch or in a pit. So this is a real basic key say kavua. And this person has the need to defecate. So certainly he has to take off his tefillin. And the Mechaber told us in Sif Hey that what he needs to do is he needs to take off his tefillin when he's four amas away from the basic key say. Then he should take the tefillin, he should wrap them up with the ritzuas, and he should hold them in his right hand, wrapped, covered up in his beged, keneged liboy. And he has to make sure that the ritzuas as well are tucked in, and that the ritzuas are not exposed either. So, in basically in Sifhei, the Mechaber gave us one scenario where somebody would be entering a Besakise kavua while he's holding the tefillin in his hands, wrapped up in a beged. Also, we learned earlier another two possibilities of entering a Beis HaKisei. One is if somebody needs to urinate, if he wants to go into a Beis HaKisei Kavua, so we said normally in a Beis HaKisei Kavua, where people go to defecate, a person would normally take care of his business while in a sitting position, Therefore, we don't have to worry about nitzitzites. We don't have to worry about droplets of urine. Therefore, the um, in in such a scenario, the person has to take off his tefillin since he's going to be sitting in a base akise kavua. We have to be worried shema yaset srachav. He might feel the urge to defecate. He might come to defecate while wearing his tefillin. So certainly, he has to take his tefillin off. And he could hold on to his tefillin because we don't have to worry about nitzaytzais. So that's a second possibility where somebody would be going into a base akise while holding his tefillin. He's going into a base akise kavua in order to urinate, and he's going to do so sitting down, so there's no risk of nitzaytzais. So he could hold his tefillin. Um, another possibility would be in a base akise arai. Somebody could go into a, excuse me, <clears throat> somebody could go into a basic kisa arai um, in order to urinate. Now, in a basic kisa arai, normally you would be standing up, then there's a risk of nitzaitzais. But there's no risk of Shema Yasset Srachav because he's not sitting down. In that case, the person would go into the Beis HaKisei Arai in order to urinate while the tefillin would be on his head. So those are three possible scenarios where somebody would be going in to a Beis HaKisei with his tefillin. Either with the tefillin on his head in the case of the Beis HaKisei Arai or with the tefillin in his hands in the case of the Beis HaKisei Kavua. Or, in the case of the Beis HaKisei Kavua, in order to defecate, he would take off the tefillin and hold them in his hands, wrapped up in a baguette. Now, here in Sivav, second line down, Ayn Gimel Abad Aleph, the Mechaber says, Hayolavush betfillin. So let's say somebody's wearing his tefillin. V'hutzrach le Beis HaKisei Balayla. And now, he feels the need to use the Beis HaKisei, but it's already Layla. Oi, samuch lechashecha. Or it's not Lila yet, but it's very close to Shkia. It's very close to nightfall. Now, you generally don't wear your tefillin at night. 
So in this case, if you take off your tefillin in order to use the base akise, you're not going to putting them on again. In that case, says the Mechaber, then don't go into the Beis Hakise in order to in order to defecate while you're holding the tefillin wrapped up in your beget. Or even if you want to go into a Beis Hakise Kavua where you're going to urinate while sitting down holding the tefillin, or like the B'ar Allah says, or you want to go into a basic kisi, I write to urinate while you're standing, with, while you're wearing the tefillin. Don't do that. If it's Laila or it's Samach Lecha Sheikha, Elokate said, yeah, I say, rather, what should you do? Chaltzan, take the tefillin off and put them away. Chaltzan, take them off. Umanichan Bikli, and if you have a keli, like a tefillin bag, that you generally put the tefillin in, so put the tefillin in the bag. Imahaya by tefach. If the bag is at least a tefach by a tefach large, or put them into a container that's not designated for the tefillin, even though it doesn't have a tefach inside, and hold the kli, hold the keli containing the tefillin in your hands and go in and use the bezakise. In a nutshell, what the Mechavah is trying to tell us over here is, All of these Eterim that we've discussed that allow you to go into the Beis HaKisei while holding the tefillin wrapped up or in a beged, that's only during the day when you're going to take the tefillin off, you're going to wrap them up in your beged, go into the Beis HaKisei, come back out, wash your hands, and put the tefillin right back on again. That's when we're makel, and we give you this ability to go into the Beis HaKisei while holding the tefillin wrapped up in your beged. But if it's night, so it's time to take the tefillin off and put them away. So before you go into the Beis HaKise, take the tefillin off, put them away, put them in a keli. And if you have to take them with you into the Beis HaKise in order to protect them, because you don't have a place to put them, right? You, we're talking about a Beis HaKise Shabbat Sade, a Beis HaKise that's out in the fields. So fine, so you'll take it with you into the Beis HaKise, but it'll be in a proper container. Now, the Mechaber gave us over here, when it comes to the container that you're putting the tefillin into, the Mechaber said either a keli that has a tefach, or if it's a keli that's not designated for the tefillin, it doesn't have to have a tefach. What the Mechaber is saying is like this. If you're putting the tefillin away in a container, we want it to be a container that's not bottled to the tefillin. Now, a container that's designated for the use of the tefillin very easily becomes bottled to the tefillin. So, if it's a very small, tight container, and you put the tefillin in, it becomes bottled to the tefillin, and it's as if the tefillin aren't in a container at all. But, if it's a larger keli, so there's a tefach by a tefach amount of space inside the keli, then even if it's a keli that's meyuchet for the tefillin, it's designated for tefillin use, it's not bottled to the tefillin. But if you're using a keli that's not designated for the tefillin at all, then it doesn't have to have a tefach. Because if it's a keli that's not designated for the tefillin, it has a standing on its own, and it doesn't become bottle to the tefillin. Let's see the Mishnah Brewery here. It says the Mishnah Brewery, is cut mechaf alef. Gelulin bebigdoi. Return the loyimar. What the Mechaber wants to say is, Mashuhutar b'sif ha'kaidim. This heter that we gave you earlier in sif hei, la'achzan b'yaminoi bebigdoi. We said that if somebody has the need to defecate, he could go into the Beis HaKisei with the tefillin wrapped up in his beget. Says the Mechaber, that heter, that's only when, when you come out of the Beis HaKisei, you're going to put the tefillin back on. Then, since you're going to put the tefillin right back on again, we, we're not matriach you to go get a keli and put the, keli, the tefillin in a keli. You could go into the basic kisei while they're just wrapped up in the baguette and you're holding them in your hand. But if there isn't going to be any time to put the tefillin back on again, so then put them away in a proper keli. If it's a keli that's a to the tefillin, 
So then the Kaili has to have a tefach inside. Aval Kishayim by tefach, because if it doesn't have a tefach, bottle the Gabi at Tfilin, it becomes bottle to the Tfilin, Kaven Shehu Kilyon, since it's a Kaili that's designated for the Tfilin, it very easily becomes bottle to the Tfilin. Va'asal Achni Sabla Beis Akisei, and then you're not allowed to bring them into the Beis Akisei. Ais Katan Chav Gimel, take the Kaili with you in your hand into the base of Kisei, B'yadu v'nichnas, sh'lo yitlo aysam, o'yvei drachim, because you have to take it with you, you can't leave the tefillin outside of the base of Kisei, somebody might take them. Now we go to Siv Zayin. Bamed varam amurim, all of these heterim that we're talking about going into the base of Kisei with the tefillin, the base of Kisei shebesode, this is all when we're dealing with the base of Kisei that's out in the fields. Avol be base of Kisei shebabayis, but if we're talking about a base of kise that's attached to the house, lo yachnisem klal, you can't bring the tefillin with you into the base of kise at all. Why? Kevich yachal anicha mamakam amishtamer. If if you have a base of kise, when it says base of kise babayis, I would assume that this includes when you have an outhouse in the backyard. The point is that if you're by the house, take the tefillin off, put the tefillin in the house. They're protected. What do you have to take them with you into the base of kise? We ever heard of such a thing? Take the tefillin into a base of kise. It's only when you're stuck that you don't have a, a protected place to put them. That's when we allow you to take the tefillin into the base hakise. Says the Mishnah Klal, don't bring the tefillin into the base hakise at all. Even if they're in a bag, don't bring them in. If the tefillin are in the tefillin bag. And then you take the tefillin bag with the tefillin in them and you put them into your pocket. So the pocket is not a keli that's designated to the tefillin. Now you have a situation where the tefillin are in a bona fide double keli, a kli beside kli. They're in the keli that's meyuchet to the tefillin, and then the keli that's meyuchet to the tefillin is in a pocket which is not meyuchet for the tefillin. So now you have tick besach tick, and that would be mutter. Ice cotton chavhei. This is a very important ice cotton of Mishnah Bura over here, tucked away at the end of Hilchas tefillin. The mechaber said, if you're talking about a base kisei by a house, so don't take the tefillin into the base kisei at all. Put the put the tefillin in the bias where there'll be an amokah mishdamer. How about other Sifrei Kedusha? Like a pocket sitter or a pocket Chumash. Sheyesh ben Shemois. We're not talking about, let's say, Mishnayis. That generally doesn't have to shame Hashem. But a sitter has Shemois in them. A, 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 a Chumash has Shemois in them. Imheim bekis shari lach nisam. If they're in a pouch, if they're in a bag, you could bring them into the base Kisei. Some say to be in a tafke tick beside tick that you need a double covering. So that would mean you have a sitter, you put it in a bag, you take the sitter in the bag, you put it in your pocket. That's a tick beside tick. The cover of the sitter doesn't count because that's kill young. That's designated. That's to be tick beside tick. They say the Torah also be called gavdi. The custom of Shari Chuva, the Isan of Mabisha, the Tinoika is Pekamea, Shakasim Shemus Peklaf. Those that have that put on little children a Kamea that has a shame on it, Sark Lizarashi, Klebus like Kli, it has to be inserted in a double Kali, Kevan Cha Tinoika is Nif Nembehem, Baoida Malem. I'm not sure if what I just said was right. I said that by a Chumish or by a sitter, you have to put it in a bag and then put the bag in your pocket. But uh, the cover of the sitter itself is not considered one covering. I'm not sure that that's right. It actually might be considered a covering, just like what we had in Ois Katan Chavdalit, where if you put the tefillin into the tefillin bag and then you put the tefillin bag in your pocket, that's considered a double covering. Even though the tefillin bag is kilyon, it's dedicated to the tefillin, it's an effective first covering, and the pocket is the second covering. So the cover of the chumish, or the cover of the sitter, l'chayr, would be one covering, and then the pocket l'chayr would be a second covering. Okay. Sevches. Im shachach tefillin If somebody forgot that he was wearing tefillin, 
and he went into the Beis Kisei and he started defecating. He should put his hand to cover up the tefillin until he completes the first bowel movement. In other words, his excrement that's coming out, he should finish that. The yoytze, and then he should stop himself, and then he should go out. The cholzan, take off the tefillin. The chayzev and nichnas, and then go back into the beis hakisei. Says the mishnah brayz kan chafav at sheyigmar. The he doesn't. He's not mechuyev to forcefully restrain himself in middle of the first bowel movement. Why? The amud hachayzer, because when you do that, there's a sakana. Maybe a adam lidei hidroikan. It could cause this disease. Of hydroikon. The seal on Achaiser, and if somebody forcefully stops himself from urinating, maybe a Adam Lidei that could bring some kind of jaundice, and the halacha does not require you to put yourself in a mock of Sakana. Ice cotton test, Mutal Roife, Likach Abit Shalme Raglayim, Biyada Yutfilin Beroichai. A doctor, remember again, this is all against the backdrop of people who are to wear Tfilin all day. A doctor is allowed to hold a urinal. A uh, something that is a container that contains urine while he's wearing tefillin, ubal nefesh yachmir la'atzmai, but ubal nefesh should be machmir when possible. Says the Mishnah Rabbis, Kalach of Zayin, the Rofei Likach lived out by a chayla. The Rofei, the doctor, wants to take a urine specimen, so he has a urine sample in a container. He vein tzarek lachleit says a tefillin, he doesn't have to take off his tefillin when he handles the urine container. Vov to have a Rofei. The story comes up by a doctor. It's not restricted to a doctor. Somebody is helping out a chayla and he has the need to take a urinal and move it. He's allowed to do it while he's wearing tefillin. Okay, Simon Mem Dalad. Is there sheina b'tfilin? The prohibition to sleep while wearing tefillin. Ubay sif echad. And here we have one sif. Says the Mechab sif alef. Kolzman cha tefillin b'roishai ay b'zroishai. So long as the tefillin are on one's head or on one's arm, Asr Lishain Mehem, it is forbidden for him to sleep. Afil Mushnas Arai, even just a little catnap, he's not allowed to sleep. Says the Mishnah Rais Katnalaf Arai, why are you not allowed to take a little catnap while you're wearing tefillin? To Gazrin on Shemayavai La Fiach Behem, the risk is that while you're sleeping, you might pass gas, you might not have a guf naki. Not allowed to do that while you're wearing tefillin. So what does the Mechaber say? We have to go weiter in the Mechaber before we finish this Mishnah So the Mechaber says, Ella, im haniach alehem sudar, if he covers the tefillin up with some kind of a piece of fabric, he covers it up with a, with a cloth, the loy haisa ima isha, and he's not together with his wife, yashen behem shinas arai, then he could sleep a Shina Sarai. Now let's go back over here. To, uh, let's finish the Mishnah Ice cotton olive. So what did the Mechaber say? You're not allowed to sleep even a Shina Sarai, even a little catnap while you're wearing tefillin. Unless, if you cover the tefillin up with a Sudr, and you're not together with your wife, then you could sleep a Shina Sarai. Why? So says the Mishnah here at the bottom of Ayin Gimel and Aleph, finishing Ice cotton olive. Val Yedea Nochas HaSudr Aleihen, by covering up the tefillin with a sudar, yizkar sheyesh tefillin alav, that acts as a reminder that you're wearing tefillin. Even though you're dremeling, but the fact that you took a sudar and you covered up your tefillin will serve as a reminder that you're wearing tefillin v'layavay lafiach, and we then, then we're somehow not concerned that you'll come to be mefiach. To a turning time, gimlam et beiz, ima isha, this is only if you're not together with your wife. Avalim ishta imai, but if his wife is with him, also then it's forbidden to even take a cat nap with the tefillin, even if they're covered. Gzeru shemi yishamish ben, because there's a risk that he might come to have marital relations while wearing the tefillin. Yoshein bahem, so the mechaber said that if you cover the tefillin with a sudor and you're not together with your wife, yoshein bem shnish sarai, then you can take a cat nap. He's cut and gimel. Yoshein bahem. He brings up an interesting point. And this brings up again something that we've discussed already many times. Ah, if you're sleeping, you're going to be Mesiach Das from your tefillin. And you're not allowed to be Mesiach Das from tefillin. Says the Mishnah, no, again, you're mistaking what it means to be Mesiach Das from tefillin. 
Falling asleep is not considered as a chadas. Elikishu oimed b'schoik v'kalus roish. Again, being mesiach das from tefillin means acting in a way that is antithetical to tefillin. Schoik in kalus roish, lightheadedness, clowning around, joking around, that's antithetical to wearing tefillin. So that's called being mesiach das from tefillin. Clearly, you're not margish that you're wearing tefillin. Or if you are, there's something wrong with you. You're not matching your tefillin. That's acting in a way that's antithetical to tefillin. That's being Messiah Das from tefillin. Falling asleep is not being Messiah Das from tefillin. And you'll see it's going to have a very interesting phrase that's going to come up soon. But first, the Mishnah says, even not just sleeping. Remember, they wore tefillin all day. A carpenter might be working very hard on framing a house. So he's concentrating, and he's taking measurements, and he's putting in nails, and he's, pay, you know, all, and he's cutting two-by-fours. He's concentrating on his malacha. Well, he's not thinking about tefillin. That's not called being Messiah Das from tefillin. So that he's not mamish thinking about his tefillin. Ein zen nikra hezakadas. That's not called being Messiah Das from tefillin. You're allowed. You're supposed to wear tefillin all day, so you're allowed to do your malacha while you're wearing tefillin. That's not called being Messiah Das, unless you start acting in a way that's antithetical to tefillin. Then clearly you don't know that you're wearing tefillin. Unless you start paying attention so much to tzarche haguf, if you get so involved that you push it, forget you're a shamayim, then you'll be siach das from tefillin. This is what I found to be an interesting phrase. It's not just schoik v'kalas roish, but somehow if your shamayim starts to escape you, that's also being siach das from tefillin. How could you not have your shamayim while you're wearing tefillin? Kishem Hashem nikru alecha. The chain, and this I love this phrase here, it says the Chavetz Chaim, the chain, Kishu Yoshein, when somebody is sleeping, Shechech Havlei Hoylam. He forgets about all the nonsense of this world. When you're up, so you might get distracted by, by the Oylam Agashmi, you might get distracted by nonsense. While you're sleeping, you forget all the nonsense of the world. So you're not being Messiah Das from Tvilin. When we come up, nevertheless, says the Mishnah Bura, Mitzvah Mina Muvchar, she hei daitoi tamin ala Tvilin. Mitzvah in Amufkar is that the tefillin should always be actively on your mind. So there should not be a risk that you will become distracted and start to have machshavis rois. And that's why you're supposed to touch your tefillin all the time. With the exception of while you're davening or learning Torah, then you certainly don't have to actively have your mind on tefillin. Ice cut and dalid. So the Mishnah said, the Mechaber, I'm sorry, the Mechaber said, if you cover the tefillin with a suder and you're not together with your wife, then you could sleep a shinas arai. Ice cut and dalid says the Mishnah shinas arai. Vein shir lazeb. We don't have an exact measurement for what's called a shinas arai. There are those that say it's the amount of time it takes to walk 100 amas, approximately 200 feet. It's about 1 67th of an hour, which, if my math is right, approximately 50, 54, 53, 54 seconds. That's a real catnap, 53 seconds. Okay, going back to the Mechaber, top line, two thirds of the way through the line. So, you're going to take a cat nap, you're going to cover the tefillin with a sudar, and you're not together with your wife. The kate said, what should you do? How should you take this cat nap? You should rest your, your head down between your knees. So, you're taking a cat nap in a sitting position. And you sit up and sleep. Okay, says the Mishnah Rai's cotton hay, Bain Birkov. We're not going to let you take a cat nap on a bed. Because then you might fall asleep into a shinas ka. And that's certainly forbidden. 
continues the Mechaber second line down. If the tefillin, if you're not wearing the tefillin, but you took the tefillin, you put them in your hand, and you use the ritzua to kind of tie the tefillin to your hand. So you're not wearing tefillin in the proper way, but they're kruchin biyadai, they're tied to your hand, so you cannot drop them. That's the point. Then you could sleep even a shinas kva, because you're not wearing the tefillin, so we don't have to worry shema yafiach them, and you can't drop them because they're tied onto your hand. Says the Mishnah is cut and vav. Because you're not wearing them properly. Vim continues the mechaber. Vim oichson biyadai. But if you're holding the tefillin, ve'enam kruchim biyadai, and they're not tied to your hand, also lishan mehem afilu shinas arai. Then you're not allowed to sleep even a shinas arai because we're afraid you're going to drop them. Ois katan zayin also lishan dechay shinan shabi yiplumi yadai. We're afraid you might drop them. Says the Rama hagav adafke kishayichson b'loy nar tekan. This is only true if you're holding them while they're not in their bag. Avo bin our take on, but when they're in the bag, bechal inyan shari, then all is mutter. Says the Mishnah Roy is cut and ches, bechal inyan shari, da filum yip, you could even sleep a shinas kva if you're holding the tefillin and they're in the nartik. The afilum yip la karka, even if they fall, ain chashash kol kach, it's not so terrible because they're in a bag. Behind the beer, I grow to cost of the dafke, a nartik, machzik tefach. It has to be a bag that has a tefach inside. Oz chashel chatzitza lahafzik beino lekarka. Then it forms an, a halachic interposition between the tefillin and the karka, and then we're not so worried if you drop them. Let's push on through simen memhe and try to complete hilchas tefillin. Simen memhe. Din tefillin bebeis akfara yisav bebeis haberchatz. The halachas of wearing tefillin in a cemetery or in a bathhouse. Uboi be seifim. Says the Mechaber Sif Aleph. Aser lichnais be beis akvarois. It's a very catchy Mechaber over here. It's very tricky. Aser lichnais be beis akvarois. You're not allowed to enter a beis oilam, a beis akvaris. Oi besaych arba abu shal meis. Or to enter, to come within four abus of a meis. Utfilin Baraisha, while you're wearing Twilin, Mishum Loig Larosh Kharafai Sehu, because of the Pasik of Loig Larosh. It's like you're making fun of the Mason. Look, I could wear Twilin, I'm alive. I'm in this world. I could wear Twilin. I could rack up Schusim. Right? It's right after Yom Kippur. We all want to rack up Schusim in a hurry. Gotta admit, that's one of the reasons why I was eager to say share tonight. Because I wanted right away, right after Yom Kippur. I want to rack up some fresh schusim. I want to teach Torah. So, like this, you're making fun of the mace. Look, you're in the kever. Hashemayim la Hashemayim la Hashem. The Oretz not son of the Adam. The people that are Baaretz, uh, we, we could be Bekai Mitzvahs. The Mesim, eh, too late, they can't be Bekai Mitzvahs. So you come into the base of Chayim, wearing your tefillin, you're making fun of the Mesim. Vem heim mechusim mutter. But if the tefillin are covered, and we're going to see that means completely covered, down to the Ritzuas that are on your hands, and the Ritzuas of the Shalroish, everything's got to be completely covered. If the tefillin are completely covered, then mutter. So the first thing that the Mishavur is going to shtel on over here, and I just cut an aleph, is this terminology of the Mechaber, Aser lichnais bebeis hakvaris, oi besaych arba amri shalmeis. Two things. Says the Mishavur is cut an aleph. Bebeis hakvaris. Vafilu taich arba amis shall mekaim haschalas hakvarim gam kein oser. You're not allowed to go into the base hakvaris, but not only are you not allowed to go into the base hakvaris, right? That's the first thing the Mishnah said. Oser lichnois for base hakvaris. Then he said oy besaych arba amis shall meis. Says the Chavetz Chaim. One way to understand the two things that the Bechavit tells us is. You're not allowed to go into the Beis HaChayim. But not only that, more than that. V'afilu toich arba amay shomakayim ha'schalas ha'kvarim gam kein oser ileka mechitza mafsekes beinehem. Let's say the Beis HaChayim doesn't have a fence around it. It doesn't have a wall around it. So you know where the Beis HaChayim starts. The Beis HaChayim starts over there. So if I walk all the way up to the kever, I didn't go into the Beis HaKvaris. 
because this kever is the first kever in the Beis Achayim. I'm still outside the Beis Achayim, but I'm within Dalar Amos of the Mace. So therefore, says the Mechaber two things. One is, also Lichtlis for Beis Akfaris. You can't go into the Beis Akfaris. But not only you can't go into the Beis Akfaris, you can't get within four Amos of the first kever of the Beis Akfaris, even if you're outside of the Beis Akfaris, unless there's a Mechitza. If there's a Mechitza, then it seems that you could. Now, the Mechaber could have written this in a simpler way. He could have joined it all into one. And he could have said, You're not allowed to go within four Amis of a Kever. So that would tell me, even if it's outside the Mesachayim, I can't go within four Amis of the Kever. Or if there's a Mace that's not in the Kever. You're doing Shmir on a Mace. You can't get within Dalan Amos of the Mace. But why do we have to break it up? Also, Lichtlein's Bebeis Akvaris, Oi, Besaych Arba Amishal Mace. Das Amagin Avram, the Magin Avram tells us, the Baller Ames that the Mechaber wants to tell us is, the Memokum Beis Akvaris for Lifnim, Osir, you're not allowed to go into the Beis Akvaris, I feel the Rachak Arba Amish Menakever. Let's say you go into the Beis Akvaris, and at the beginning of the Beis Akvaris, there's no graves. It's a Beis HaKvaris. This is all land that's designated as a Beis HaChayim. One day they're going to open up this Chalukah and they're going to start burying people there. But right now there's nobody there. So I go into the Beis HaChayim and for the first 20 feet there are no Kvarim. Says the Magen Avram, that's what the Mechaber means. The Mechaber means also Lichtlein's Beis HaKvaris. Even if you're not within Dalai Lama's of a mace. Doesn't matter. Even if you're not within Dalai Lama's of a Kever. You're 100 feet away from the first Kever. But you're in the Beis HaChayim. Now let it go into a Beis HaChayim while you're wearing tefillin. So that's the Magen Avram, the Balarami, the Bimokka Beis HaKvaris, for Lufnim, Osir, Afil, Racha, Kaba, Amis, when I Kever. The Yesh, Mekil, and Bazer, but there are those that are Mekel. Vayin, Bebir, Alacha, the Be'emtza Beis HaKvaris, Sheyesh, Kvarim, Saviv, it's one thing if you talk about the beginning of the Beis HaKvaris with his 20 feet empty of Kvar. But how about if you go into the Beis HaKvaris and in the middle there's an empty Chalukah. But you're in the middle of the Beis HaChayim and you're surrounded by Kvarim. There the Beir Allah says you should definitely be Machmer. V'ayin b'bir halacha de be'emtza beis HaKvaris she'esh Kvarim saviv near the yesh l'hachmer afil racha kar ba'amis when I kever. But at the end of the basic forest, or at the beginning of the basic forest, the ain't sham kvarim, which is no kvarim at all. Rock the hook tzakaka the kvarim is just designated to one day be used for burials. As long as you're down and away from a kever, you don't have to be machmer. Vava pikein, still in all, says the Chavetz Chaim. Nachain shalai yikanis klal betzilin shebaroshai. It's proper that you should not go into the basic chaim at all. While you're wearing tefillin, kol shu lifdim in mechitzas beis akvaris. Once you're within the mechitzas of the beis akvaris, you have no business wearing tefillin. Shemi yiskarim b'seich arba amis shall eis a kever blidas because you might come to walk within four amis of a kever without realizing it. Ice cotton base b'seich arba amis the cost of our teres ikenim the kol oisay cheder shamais munach boy. You're doing shmir on a mace. I don't care how big the room is. The entire room that contains the mace. Chosh of Karba Amish al Mais is considered like the Arba Amish of the Mais and you don't wear Tfilim. The Magin Gibayrim, Chaylak Allah, the Kos of Dayna Taifis Rak Arba Amish Ayn Sham. The Magin Gibayrim says no, only four Amish. Vafilu Kevish al Katan Shadayn lo Yigiel al Klal Mitzvais. Vafilu Hachi al Kani Sham al Tfilim Barosh. Vafilu Hachi al Kani Sham al Tfilim Barosh. Vafilu Hachi The Bechabra said, Imhem Bechus and Mutter, I skat and Gimel. Vitzar Shagam and Ritzuais, Tiyanam and Chusais. The Ritzuas also have to be covered. Lefikach, Ava Bishamotel Lekanis Betfilin Shal Yad Levada, Hayel Vumachosa, even though it would seem that to go near a mace while wearing the Tfilin Shal Yad should be very simple because the Tfilin Shal Yad is usually covered, still, Tsarak Lizar Beritzuas Shal It's Boy, even the Ritzuas that are on your finger, Shedia Kamkein Machosa, those also have to be covered. Okay, Rabbi Sai. Last Sif in Hilchus Tfilin. Very momentous occasion. Sif Beis, bottom line. Ein Gimel Amin Beis. Bebeis HaMerchatz, in a bathhouse. Now, the bathhouse in the time of the Mishnah, in the time of the Gemara, 
generally were comprised of three rooms. There's one room that I would call kind of the waiting room. That's the outer room. The outmost room, the first room. Then there's the base Haim Tsoi, there's the middle room. The middle room is kind of the changing room. And then there's the innermost room, the third room. That's the Merchatz. That's where you take a bath or you take a shower. Now, logistically speaking, the way they used the bathhouses, in the Merchatz itself, the bathing area, there, 99.9% of the people, if not everybody, they're all walking around Arayim. They're all bare. They're all naked. Because that's where they actually go into the bath, go into the shower. The, out, the middle room was the changing room. So normally, in the changing room, you would have a mix. You would have people that are dressed, either because they just came in, or they just finished getting dressed and they're about to go out. You also have people that are bare. They just finished undressing, and they're about to go into the merchats. So the middle room is a middle. You're going to have people dressed and people undressed. In the outermost room, in the waiting area, that you generally don't have people undressed. Even if somebody goes from the middle room into the outer room before he's completely dressed, but he doesn't go in when he's undressed, he might put on his, his undergarments. In those days, what they would call a chaluk, which was kind of like, let's say, a long undershirt. So once he puts that on, he's covered. Maybe he'll go in from the middle room to the outer room while he's wearing his chaluk and complete getting dressed in the outer room, but he, no one goes into the outer room while he's completely undressed. Okay, with that, against that backdrop, let's see what the Machari says here, Sif Beis. Bebeis HaMerchatz, in a bathhouse. Bayis HaChitzayin, the outermost room. Shekola Oimdim Boyeheim Levushim. In that room, everybody who's there is dressed. Yechelen Lohem Yachshom Tfilin L'Chatchila. You could go put on Tfilin in that room, L'Chatchila, and make a bracha, why not? In the middle room, where some people are standing there dressed, and some people are undressed, and you can't put tefillin on in that room. But but if you're wearing tefillin in that room, you don't have to rush to take them off. But in the innermost room, the merchatz itself, Everybody in there is completely undressed. I feel how you barayshay. Even if the tefillin you're wearing the tefillin, tzarich lechal said you must take them off. Says the Mishnah Berurah back in Ayin Gimel Amid Beis Ayis Kotan Dalid by a sachitzay. Shadarkam haya the way that they used the merkatz was laachar shalav shua chaluk pabayis ha imtzay when they finished putting on that long cloak, which was their undergarment kind of in the middle room. Lelech lebeis achitza, and then they went out to the outermost room, what I call the waiting area of a ligmar alavisha. They finished getting dressed it's over there. Ice cotton hay, umiktsas on arumim. In the middle room, you have a mix. You have people that are dressed and people that are undressed. Yeshayim, there are those that say, the emata ain't sham adamarim. Let's say you find yourself in the middle room of the beis hamerchatz, and you look around, and there's nobody undressed. Everybody is dressed. So there are those that are mekel and say, You want to put on your tefillin right now? You could put on your tefillin and make a bracha. Why not? There's nobody here that's undressed. But but some forbid it. Since this is a makam that's miyuchad for people to be undressed, it has a shtikle din of a merchatz, of the inner room, where people are actually undressed. And therefore, you can't put on tefillin lechatchila. You don't have to take them off if you're wearing them, but you don't. You can't put on tefillin. Ubeis hatfila. Now, this was all talking about a merchatz. This is talking about a bathhouse, showers. People go to wash themselves. Now, how about a beis hatfila, a mikveh? Mashma betaz simen peidalit. The din bias emtsa yesh lechol davar. That the mikveh has a din of a bias emtsa. In the middle room, where some people are dressed, some people are undressed, and if you're wearing tefillin, you don't have to rush to take them off. But to make a bracha on tefillin, you're allowed to make their ayin shab timeline. The Mugget of Ram is mashman in a base of tefillin. If there's nobody there that's undressed, you can actually put on tefillin to make a bracha. 
the dafka ba merchot techmiru by a base of merchots they're more machmer alpha pisha ain't shamadam right we saw in the beginning of this ice cotton that there are some that are machmer and say that in the middle room of the base of merchots even if there's nobody undressed you're not allowed to put on tefillin because it's a mock of for people being undressed now by the base of tefillin we're saying you could be a little bit more makel why the dafka ba merchot techmiru by a bathhouse that's made for washing, there were more machmer, Avu Pisha ain't sham odom. Bisham shazu amosoi rabba, because the odors and the smells are 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 increased. Mehevel achamin shebishtam shidba, it's very dank and humid because of the hot water that they use in the base of Merchatz. Mashay gave a mikvah, mikvah was generally cold. Vim shaifchim bagam kin chamin yeshlai. Avalim yesham odom aroim, but certainly if there's somebody there who's undressed, I'm a little puzzled by the last words of this ice cotton. Because he says clearly here that if there's anybody undressed in the room, you're not allowed to walk into the room with Tvilin. Because Asr Lamaid Lifna Hashem Aroim. But we just said that the Beis Amerikats in the middle room where some people are dressed and some people are undressed, you're allowed to be in there with Phil and Shabaroshe. So I'm not sure why this isn't a stira. I'm a little stumped at the moment. I'll try to look into it. Ice convov of Abayas Apnimi, the inner room, Bazel Koliyama, Filo in Sham Adam Araim. Um, Abayas Apnimi, the inner room, the Merchats himself, if you're worried, Phil, and you have to take them off. Bazel Koliyama, a Filo in Sham Adam Araim, even if there's nobody there that's undressed. To the Fisha Zuame, Kabesa Kise Damia, that's considered like a Besa Kise. Okay, and with that, we conclude Hilchas Tfilin. Hadrin Allah Hilchas Tillan Vahadra Khalan, Daitan Allah, Hilchas Tillan Vadaita Khalan, Lai Nistish Naminach, Hilchas Tillan, Lai Sistish Naminan, Loiba Alma Hadain, Valoiba Al Loiba Alma Huda Asi. I would certainly encourage people to try to set aside some time. We put so much work into Hilchas Tillan, it's Kedai to make a Seder to try and do some Chazara. Again, a Gmach Siva Taiva, good Kibetch Yar to all my lovely listeners. Rabbi Shalom should have Rachmanus on Gans Kla Yisrael in this new year. We should all have a good kvittel. And Achenu Kol Beis Yisrael b'Makom b'Chom Makom Shehem. Rabbi Shalom should send Yeshua, Nachama, Hatzala, Parnasa, Shiduchim, Rafua Shalema to everyone. Everyone should only know from Simchas good tidings and happiness. Be well.